Peace, family. It's your brother, Mark Lamont Hill. Welcome to the Mark Lamont Hill official YouTube channel. We are here tonight uh, with a breaking news of sorts. Uh, I was on the internet, minding my own business, and I came across something that I thought was super interesting. It was an announcement that Sean King, that Sean King uh, had uh, announced today on the eve of Ramadan um, that he had converted to Islam. Or he didn't announce it, but it was announced that Sean King had converted to Islam. And so I found this, to be honest, incredibly fascinating. And I knew that y'all would find it incredibly fascinating. In fact, um, before I could even get to my computer to verify it, people were sending me links. People sent me links to uh, my dear sister Zahra Bilu, who is one of the uh, a high ranking person in, uh, in care, um, which of course, you know, the Council for American Islamic Relations. Uh, she was, I think there for this event. If she wasn't there, uh, she knows who was there. Uh, but Sean King showed up to the Valley Ranch Islamic Center the Valley Ranch Islamic Center. And in the Valley Ranch Islamic Center, Sean King, y'all know him as the activist. Y'all know him as, uh, you know, podcaster, writer, journalist, and Baptist preacher. Sean King's been a Baptist preacher for a very long time. I, I first encountered Sean King at Morehouse College when we were both uh, at, at, in, in Atlanta at the same time, when we were both, um, uh, you know, I think I was a freshman. He was, I was a sophomore. He was a freshman. Um, but we both were there and he was down with the church. Then he was a dyed in the wool Christian. He was Christian down to the socks. And suddenly today we see Sean at the Islamic center. I want you to see the evidence here. Cause I don't want you to think that I'm up here just capping or, or exaggerating or spreading gossip or rumor. Here is Sean King at the Valley Ranch. And this just happened maybe an hour ago. This is Sean King at the Valley Ranch Islamic Center. I'm pulling up uh, something else for y'all too. This is him at the Valley Ranch Islamic Center. Um, on the first night, the night before Ramadan, um, being given his Shahada, and that's his wife next to him, Rai King, um, who's been with him since day one. This is his high school sweetheart. This is his wife. This is the mother of his children. This is his life partner. They both stood there in front of the brother you see with the microphone, Sheikh Omar Suleiman. Sheikh Omar Suleiman taking his, uh, there, excuse me, I just had a little tech glitch. I hit the wrong button. You see him there taking his shahada. Now I'm going to do a couple things at once. I'm going to break down what this thing is that's happening at the same time that we can talk about why we think it might be happening. And if you want to write your, your, your comments and thoughts in there, I'll be sure to read some of them. Of course, we prioritize members, but everybody here has a voice. Everybody here has a community. So he's taking his shahada. For those who don't know, Muslims take uh, their shahada. They declare uh, what can be called the shahada or even the shahadatain, the two uh, bearings of witness. The first one is to the oneness of God, monotheism, right? I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Right? Allah is simply the Arabic name for God. You know, he's alone. Allah is alone. Allah has no partners. God is alone. God has no partners. And then the second piece of the shahadatain is I bear witness uh excuse me. Um that uh and I bear witness that uh, Muhammad is his prophet. Muhammad Rasulullah, right? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that uh, there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. Now, this is a big deal. You may say, why is this a big deal, right? He's a Baptist preacher. For a Baptist preacher to stand up and declare the shahadatain, for a Baptist preacher to stand up and declare this is from someone, this is from the Valley uh, Ridge Islamic Center. This is their photo, not mine. That's their caption, not mine. But you can see the brother here 
receiving hugs from brothers. You can see people in the background in the Islamic Center, and they are um, congratulating him, and presumably the sisters are in, in the other side, uh, congratulating his wife on joining Islam. As a preacher, as someone who has believed in Christianity and in the, the, the belief system of Christianity and the faith of Christianity, for him to then convert to Islam or revert to Islam, and I'll talk about what that means, it means that he has now said, I no longer believe in Jesus as God or as the son of God. I no longer believe in the Trinity, right? Much of what Islam, uh, one of the fundamental distinctions, let me say it differently, one of the fundamental distinctions between Islam and, and Christianity is not the belief in a singular God I, it per se, right? Christians call God Allah as well in Arabic. But the distinction is this distinction of, of, of saying one in, or rather than three or three rather than one. It's a belief on whether or not there was a crucifixion and a resurrection. As a Christian, your fundamental faith, that the thing that make, makes a Christian a Christian rests on this question of soteriology, right? What gets you? What's your salvation? What do you believe? And for Christians, that pathway is Jesus. And it's the, 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 the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity for most Christians. Not all, but most. Some are Trinitarian. But for Muslims, that's different. So, so Sean King saying, I, I now believe that Jesus or Isa and Maryam, Isa is not a is not God, but rather a prophet, just like Moses, just like Abraham, just like Adam, just like Noah, just like Ismael, just like Ishaq, Isaac, just like Yahya, John, just like all, to say, I believe that rather than this is a huge deal. He wasn't just a Christian, he was a pastor. Sean King now believes something different. Sean King, believe something different. I see somebody in my comments here. One of my members, as a matter of fact, um, Venice Robinson. I'm stunned about Sean's conversion to Islam. Now, she's saying, I think, because he used to be a pastor, but the idea of being stunned that he's a pastor, uh, that he converted to Islam, shouldn't be so stunning. And I'll tell you why. Sean King, for the last year, and certainly the last six months, last five months um, has been inching closer and closer and sort of giving hints that he may be converted. I saw it two months ago. I saw it three months ago. And I said, Sean is going to convert or Sean is going to revert. Um, I, I use those words interchangeably. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the lexicon of vocabulary of Islam, there is a fundamental belief that people are all born with a, uh, an inclination toward monotheism. That that's human nature. To put more simply, some Muslims would simply say to be Muslim is your natural state. And so when you become a Muslim uh, later in life, you are not converting, but you are reverting. You're going back to your natural uh, uh, self. Some of that is, is based on um, this idea that comes up in Islamic extra canonical literature, this the, the hadith. Um, as fitra, right, the natural inclination toward monotheism. But in a broader sense, Muslims believe that Muslims were born Muslim, or, or, or everyone's created and born Muslim, not in terms of doc doctrine and ritual and practice, but in terms of a fundamental belief in tawhid or, or, or oneness or monotheism. And because of that, um, a lot of times you'll hear people say he reverted to Islam or converted to Islam. I don't want you to think that when people say he reverted to Islam, that it's either used pejoratively, like he reverted to his old ways, like negatively, or that it means that he was a practicing active Muslim before he was not. So the language of reverting is a very um, 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 it's, just a, it's a very specific way of thinking and framing this. Uh, Nadia Montalvo points out something that I was about to get to. And I'm thank you for saying it, Nadia Montalvo. And thank you for your generosity. Um, and that is. Sean said months ago that not since he was a child and visited the mosque on Fridays did he feel so inclined to Islam. The question is, why did he feel so inclined to um, um, Islam? One, Sean King has been uh, talking about Gaza for five months now. Sean King has been talking about the Palestinian struggle for years. I mean, for months now. He's talked about it in the past, but since October 7th, he's been talking about it in a very intense way. And one of the things that Sean had said on his social media platform, especially I believe Instagram before it was taken down, is that he was moved by how Muslims 
and specifically how Palestinians, and of course all Palestinians aren't Muslim, but how Muslims and how Palestinian Muslims were using faith as a way of dealing with the genocide that's taking place on the, in the Gaza Strip. And so for him, I think there was a sense of power and, and, and possibility in um, in Islam for him because he was watching um, he was watching something happen in Gaza. He was watching something happen in the West Bank. And when he traveled around the world uh, advocating for Palestinians, and he's been speaking it to Muslims uh, around the world lately. I remember I spoke at a CARE event um, maybe maybe in 2018 or 2019, I was accepting an award, uh, the Malcolm X Award, and Sean was there. Sean wasn't there as a Muslim, uh, but Sean certainly felt connected to Islam and he talked about feeling connected to Muslims then. And I think now part of what he, you're witnessing, part of what you're feeling, part of what you're experiencing is him seeing a tie. Now, I know some of y'all are reading this cynically. I didn't mean to leave that, that comment up so long. I wasn't being shady. I just forgot it was up. Um, um, some of y'all are reading this cynically. Um, y'all think this is a publicity stunt. Someone said it's a publicity stunt. Someone said that he is um, faking it. Someone said that he, you know, people are saying, you know, this is another grift. This is all the language is being used um, in the... Um, in the um in the comments not just here but on twitter and elsewhere that sean has um made a decision um that is more of a business decision than a a spiritual decision um i don't i don't think that that's fair look there are plenty of critiques to be made of sean Plenty of critiques made of me, plenty of critiques made of everybody. And if you want to make those critiques, make them. Make them. Um, but I don't want to presume that standing up in front of a room after a lifetime of being a Christian, a lifetime of being a preacher, after a lifetime of devoting his life to the love ethic of Jesus as articulated by people like Howard Thurman, it's hard to believe that him standing up in front of the world and saying that I no longer believe in Jesus as God. I no longer believe in the Trinity. I no longer believe this. I now believe something else. That, I would not presume that anybody would do that. Becoming Muslim after October 7th doesn't make life easier for you. Even if you're a hustler and a grifter and a thief or a liar or whatever you want to think about anybody, people usually hustle to make their life easier to make their life better um not to make their life tougher now bullet said that may be real mark but doing it live on ig today is a stunt that's an interesting point i don't know that he did it live on ig like did i don't have that information yet and so i don't want to make an assumption about why or what he did i know that it wasn't on sean king's live stream so is it that the masjid did this? Sometimes masjids just live stream stuff. I was at a masjid. I was at the uh, Central Jersey uh, Islamic Center. Not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. I, I didn't ask them to live stream it, but they did. I came in. I spoke. They paused for for uh, for for um, for prayer. They they. They paused for prayer. Everyone stopped. People, people made, people made a lot, and then people kept going. So, if someone was there and took shahada, it would have been on video. If someone were there uh, praying maghrib, it would have been there. Now. I, I feel you. There is something performative and demonstrative about saying, you know what, I'm going to, on the night before Ramadan, stand on live stream and convert to Islam. That would be problematic. I'm, let me take that back. I don't, that would be curious. But I don't want to assume that's what he did. 
because I just don't know. I don't have that evidence. If we have the evidence, say it. But for now, um, I I don't want to question anybody's faith choices. I didn't open this live up to to question Sean's faith choices, but more to think about what's the context in which people might make these choices or receive these choices. Thomas Breeze raises an interesting question. Did Ben Chavis do this too? It was in a while, but still, y'all be stay dissing the nation of Islam, yo. Y'all, y'all need to chill with that. But um, seriously, but 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 Thomas, you raise a point. Benjamin Chavis was the head of the NAACP. He was a civil rights leader. He was once incarcerated for his activism, or he became an intellectual while incarcerated and became an activist. However, you think about it. He was a thinker, he was an organizer, he was a writer, he was a scholar, he was a hero to many. Then he was embroiled in scandal. And the cynical interpretation of Ben Chavis was, yeah, well, Ben Chavis, after he could no longer be a rich, wealthy, su significant, uh, visible black leader as Reverend Benjamin Chavis, yes, he went to the Nation of Islam, he joined and became a, the, the, the minister of mosque number seven, Malcolm's old mosque. And he became Benjamin Muhammad. And then it was a point where Ben said that he wanted to still be able to run his church. No, he didn't. I take that back. He said he still wanted to be a member of the Baptist, his Baptist convention. He said, I don't see any contradiction between being a member of this Baptist convention and being uh, a minister in the nation. Now, of course, that's not true. There's a fundamental difference in Aqidah. There's a fundamental belief difference between being a Muslim in the nation of Islam or an Ansar or a Sunni or a Shia or an Ahmadiyya or any kind of Muslim and being any kind of Christian. There's a fundamental belief system difference. But Benjamin tried it. And then Benjamin eventually slowly petered out of the nation of Islam. And I know why, but that ain't my business to tell. I, I, got, I got it from the source. But that ain't my business to tell. But my point is, and he slowly went back to Benjamin Muhammad. I mean, Benjamin Chavis again. He started working with Russell Simmons. Trash again. And so for Ben Chavis, yes, the conversion or reversion was a cynical choice. It wasn't about faith. It wasn't that he had a religious conversion. He just was trying to stay in front of the line. So... I get that there's a precedent for this. I get that there's a precedent for this. But there, for every Benjamin Chavis or Benjamin Muhammad, there are literally thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people every single day who simply convert. Go follow any masjid in the country. Follow Master the Law here in Philadelphia. Shout out to Imam Idris. Go to Master Taqwa in Brooklyn, Siraj Wahesh. Just follow one of those. So I'm just telling you two that I follow, right? And see how many people every single day take their shahada just like Sean did. And they're also on Instagram. And they're also on YouTube. Let me tell you something. Again, I'm not making any judgments about Sean's faith at all. I, it's not my business. But most people who are trying to take the short line, who are trying to take the easy way out, they don't. They don't take their shahada the night before Ramadan. They don't take their shahada the night before Ramadan. 
Ramadan ain't no joke. Ramadan ain't no joke. And to, on one day, declare your shahada, and on the next day, wake up tomorrow morning, don't oversleep, and for the rest of Ramadan, you're fasting with no experience doing that, with no basis. That ain't no joke. I'm just saying, he could have had a year to do it. He could have converted the day after Eid. He could have went to an iftar. He could have went to Eid. Al, you know, he could have went to Eid al, 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 al fitr and then said, you know, or Eid al in a couple months and said, look, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm going to declare now and have a whole year to build up for Ramadan. Now, my man said, I'm going to do it today and fast tomorrow. Some people, you know, might read that as performative for Fernanda, but other people might say, yo, it's not performative. This is this is the affirmation of how seriously I take this. This is how seriously I take this. Ramadan is serious business. And I take it seriously. And so I'm announcing to the world on Instagram <laughs> that this is what I am doing. Omega asked the question, what benefits would he get from being Muslim? Well, the cynical read would be that now he has a support of Muslims all around the world. And when he gets criticized or trashed, Muslims will run to his defense. Or uh, if he's looking for a speaking circuit, then now he has a whole um, a whole speaking circuit to speak to of Muslims in, in events and cares and iftars and, and masajid and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's, there's an argument for it. There's an argument for it. But there's also an argument that the man is just believes in the oneness of Allah. Black people converting to Islam. Thank you, Leah. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate you so much. Black people converting to Islam is not a is not a it's not an uncommon thing. In jail, it happens every day. In the hood, it happens every day. In the barbershop, it happens every day. Let's not assume the worst about his faith choice. I'm not telling you that if you have a critique of Sean, you should never critique of Sean. You should. If you have a legitimate critique, have a legitimate critique. But that doesn't mean that his faith choice is wrong. Kim Kime Aboyade Akosa, you, you may have come in late um, in the room, but we broke down what the Shahada is. But very quickly, the Shahada is uh, one of the five pillars of Islam. There are five pillars to Islam. There are five fundamental things that all Muslims must do or at least believe in or, or commit to doing uh, if possible in order to be Muslim. The Shahada. There's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And Muslims believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the khatim anbiya, that he's the final prophet. Salat, prayer five times a day. Zakat, right? The giving of alms, charity, hajj, right? making the pilgrimage, if possible, to Mecca and Som, fasting during the month of Ramadan. Why the month of Ramadan? Well, Muslims fast in the month of Ramadan to commemorate um, a very important moment in Islam, which in many ways is the miracle of Islam. And that moment is the moment that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, receives what? A risala, a message from who? From the angel Gabriel. And he is commanded to read Iqra. And when the Prophet Muhammad is commanded to read, what does he do? He says, I can't read. And then what happens? He's gripped tighter. And he is told to read again. Jibril tells him to read again. He says, Iqra. And by the third time he's told to Iqra, he says what? Iqra bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. 
اقرا اقرا وربك الاكرام الذي علم بالقلم علم الانسان ما لم يعلم he says read in the name of in the name of your lord who creates right خلق الانسان من علق who created man from an علق a coagulated blood clot a blood clot علق علم الانسان what man اقرا باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق خلق وربك الاكرام right read وربك الاكرام اكرام what does اكرام mean right it's the superlative to كريم generous الذي علم بالقلم who علم teaches what by the pen this is important علم بالقلم علم الانسان ما لم يعلم teaches man what he would have never known and so this is the miracle of Islam that, that the Prophet Muhammad, who is illiterate, right? What they call at the time Ummi, illiterate, was able to read or recite that which he didn't know. This is the miracle of the Prophet, and that becomes Surah Al Alaq. For Muslims, this is major. So when you get to Shah Ramadan, when you get to the month of Ramadan, it is a commemoration of that month. So Sean King doing this now is not a small thing. Again, you might not like him. You might not agree with much of what he says. You might disagree with his methods. You might question his character. People do that with lots of people. But what does it mean to convert to Islam? It's still, even if... Even if we assumed the worst in our brother, and I don't assume the worst in, in our brother, and be clear, this isn't like some hypothetical to be shady. Even if we assume the worst though, that doesn't mean that his faith conversion is fake. But the question might be why? Why right now might you see people converting? Like they say in Surah Al-Nasr, right? Now that's referring to a different moment, but the same idea, right? You might see people, and you see people entering this religion, right? Why might you? Well, people are watching the Palestinian struggle right now. And ironically, many of the people who are Islamophobic, many of the people who hate Muslims and who are allowing the bombing of masjid, the bombing of mosques, masjids, who are allowing... Um, Muslims to be targeted and killed. And even though there are many Christian Muslims, many of them are still racialized as Muslim. Read Sahar Aziz's wonderful book, The Racial Muslim. You'll see what I'm talking about. If this is happening, then you might just be doing the very thing you're afraid of. You might just be converting people to the thing that you think is so evil because people are now sympathetic to it. People are saying, well, wait a minute. Why might you be so committed to blowing up these mosques? Why might you be committed to harming these Muslims? Let me see what these Muslims are doing. And then you look and you watch people sitting in front of Masajid. You watch people sitting in front of the mosque. You watch people making salat. You watch people praying in front of the destroyed mosque. And you say, wait a minute. You, you, you This morning in Fort uh, Tuareh, Right, this morning in Jerusalem, IDF troops, Israeli soldiers, were there infiltrating the mosque. I have been in Al Aqsa Mosque many times and seen soldiers come in, and seen I've been in Masjid Ibrahim in uh, Khalil in Hebron and watched soldiers disrespect the masjid. You can walk into, um. Masjid Ibrahim, which is where Baruch Goldstein, a Brooklyn settler, came in and massacred Muslims in 94, or certainly in the mid-90s, I think 94. And you could still, in the, in, if you walk to the front of the masjid, you can still see the bullet holes and the bullet marks. You can still see the holes in the carpet. This is what happens. This might be why people convert to Islam, because they might be sympathetic to this situation. They might feel sympathy to Muslims and say, well, what are the Muslims doing in response? And say, wait a minute, they're holding their peace. They're making dua for these babies who were just killed. They're 
preparing in the midst of a famine, in the midst of a forced starvation, they're still thinking about how they can observe Ramadan. Side note, you don't celebrate Ramadan, you observe Ramadan, you celebrate Eid. People say, why are Muslims fighting for Masjid al-Aqsa? You say, well, Muslims are fighting for Masjid al-Aqsa for a couple of reasons. One, because it's the right thing to do. It's a moral principled struggle. But Muslims are also recognizing what? That Jerusalem has a special place. So Sean King is watching what's happening in Jerusalem and he says, well, wait a minute. Muslims are defending Jerusalem because it was the first Qibla. It was the first, before Muslims prayed to Mecca, the first Qibla was where? Jerusalem. If you understand Islam, you understand the Isra and the Miraj and the Miraj happened where? Jerusalem, the night journey. Why is this relevant? It's relevant because if Sean has been watching what's happening to Palestinians right now and what's happening to Al Quds, to what's happening to Jerusalem and what's happening to the masjids and mosques around the country and what's happening to Muslims around the world and around the country, he might say, you know what, there's something to this. Could be that. Sean could be frustrated with the black church. Sean's a lifelong pastor. Sean been a pastor longer than he's been for most of his life now. Maybe he's frustrated with the direction the black church is going in. Maybe he feels like the black church isn't political enough. Maybe he feels like the black church isn't organized enough. Maybe he feels like the black church is too uh, uh, committed to health and wealth, the gospels of prosperity. Maybe he feels like that. Now, in fairness, there's a whole lot of apolitical Muslims out there. There's a whole lot of apolitical Jewish organizations. There's a whole lot of apolitical uh, Christian organizations. It's not just Christians who are not doing all they could do, but he might be disillusioned as many Christians are right now with the black church and its relationship to struggle. This might be it. So look, I don't know why Sean King did what he did. I have no idea. But for black men in America and black women in America, life is hard. And some of us are just trying to make sense of it. And for some people, the faith traditions are a way to do it. The faith traditions are a way to understand. I believe Max Roach did convert to Islam. I don't know that for a fact, but I believe so. I met his uh, granddaughter, or daughter, excuse me, in Brooklyn. I believe she told me that. Maybe like 10 years ago I met her. Um, Farrah, that's where I'm at. May all beings find peace. I'm going to take a couple questions on this before we roll out. I see there's a lot of, a lot of haters in the room, a lot of Islamophobes in the room, a lot of racists in the room. Not you, Rina Sikhan. Thank you for your comment. What would it take to believe it's sincere? That's a good question. I, you know, that's the que that's one of the questions, right? You can hold a critique of Sean and still think he's Muslim, right? For a legit, I, I don't think people necessarily, I mean, again, the, 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 the Benjamin Chavis slash Muhammad example is a good one. I ain't mad at it. That's a good example. Um, but Omega raises a counterpoint, right? She says, long term, I can't see this as a great hustle. Sean could have won the respect of Muslim people by publicly sharing his sympathy, which he has. I'm sure he gave this a ton of thought. Amber Galuli says, I have been working towards reverting and was scared to do it now. Seeing him and his wife, I am doing it now and excited. Seeing them have me gave me strength because fasting, it's scary for me. Kira Clark said, black holiness is the truth. Mark, you got to stop your self-hatred. I don't even know what, I don't think I hate myself, but I don't even know what that means, my sister. I don't, and that's not sarcasm. I literally don't know what you're talking about. Um, feel free to explain it. I'm going to give, Tasneem Dillis said, what are your thoughts on the black? I'm going to give him a whole dissertation on the black church one day. I'm going to come out here and just break that thing down. Um, no disrespect to the black church per se. Um, but I have some critiques. I have critiques of 
all these religions, all these organizations, all these movements. Tawheed Ummah says, <laughs> I'm looking at these comments. McKenzie says the Palestinians in their faith and how strong they are in their beliefs. Yes, a lot of people have said that Palestine, the Palestinian community's faith and their resilience and their spiritual fortitude has made them uh, want to struggle with Palestinians even more. It's, made, it's been impressive. It's been awe-inspiring. It's been beautiful. And, and in light of that, maybe that's why people be converting. Tatiana, uh, Tatiana, is, is that the racist person? Anyway, she said you should go Google how many genocides Muslims have committed. Look, Muslims have killed people all around the world. Ain't no doubt about that. There are violent Muslim groups. There's political Muslim groups. There's uh, fundamentalist Muslim groups. I prefer, I prefer the term political. Uh, there are irrationally, I mean, you know, there's all any critique you could have of a group. You could have a Muslim groups, of Christian groups, etc. I think the difference is when Christian groups. Like, no one says the Ku Klux Klan is a Christian group, right? Like, no one walks around saying, well, you know what? These Baptists, they're racist. They burn crosses on people. You know, what they say is, oh, well, the Ku Klux Klan, well, they might identify as Christian. I mean, they're burning crosses on people's lawns. They, they are, they're pretty public about their Christianity. They burn crosses on people's lawns. But we don't say that they are the representation or the embodiment of Christianity. We say that they are not Christians or they're bad Christians or they missed the point of Christianity. And I think that's true. I think that's fair. I think that's accurate. But if ISIS, Daesh pops up, they go, oh, look at those Muslims. That's how Muslims move. It's like, no, that's how ISIS moves. But similarly, it's not fair. And thank you, Amal Owad, for that um, wonderful comment. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read it out loud. Uh, mashallah, Ramadan Kareem. Allah Akram. Uh, to all brothers and sisters, Allah make it easy. I pray that Islam reaches all heart to the true message of Islam, especially in this blessed month of Ramadan. Um, y'all, please block anyone who's being hateful. Yeah, we're gonna start blocking people, man. Um, I, 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 I'm not really about that that uh, blocking life, but if somebody's sitting here trolling, um, then yeah, I'm, I'm not about that action either. Bullet the bunny gifted a fellow uh, fellowship a membership. Thank you so much. Uh, H199. Thank you so much. Um, Omar Suleiman and Khalid Beydoun streamed. I do not want to assume either, but I think it is interesting. Okay, so this is important. Sean King did not live stream this. This Again, for you, some of y'all, it may be a distinction without a difference. I don't know. But what I can tell you is it is important to me to make that distinction, right? To say, look, Sean didn't live stream it. He didn't jump in the world and say, hey, look at me. Now, I'm sure he gave permission. I'm sure he won't be surprised to know Yanni, that that he uh, was on the, the interwebs. But again, I think there is something to be said to me. There is something to be said. I'm just to see if I can pull up Khaled Beydoun's uh, IG so we can look at a little clip of this. Maybe y'all might feel different if y'all could, uh, let me see. I'm gonna try and pull this up because I want to see if we can actually see um, the thing that we've been talking about that therefore we don't have to speculate right wait a wait a wait a wait a wait a wait a okay here we go I am going to try um I don't see it but I do see let me see if I could do it the old-fashioned way hold up because I want to pull up Sean King's uh the, the live stream of it if I can. Let's see. No, it ain't it ain't it ain't happening. But um we will I'll I'll try and get it for y'all later because I do I do think it's important. Let me see. I'm gonna try one more way. Give me five seconds, y'all. And then meanwhile, uh put up your questions and I'll answer them. If not, we're gonna roll out. Um because Khaled Beydoun is supposed to have been the one who had the live stream, right? No, it's not up here. Okay, so another time. But uh, yeah, family, let's take these last couple questions and then we out of here. And let me see, I think there was some starred. As a South Sudanese, I can work through my Islamophobia. Many of you Westerners have no excuse, facts. Sam, please become, um, thank you for becoming rather a, a, uh, a YouTube channel member. Um, first, Andrew Tate and now Sean King. What that mean? 
that's not me being I think y'all have to break that down for me. I don't, I don't know what that means. Give me the Andrew Tate uh, science. I, I just don't know what it is. Amy Sita, shout out to you. Shout out to you, you, you. Um, let me see. Sad that you see Troy from a channel. Or was that, yeah, I don't even know what's going on in here. Uh, Q&A tonight. Yes, y'all, there'll be a Q&A tonight. We do office hours tonight around about 11 o'clock. Um, yes, seven, seven figures. More Sudan. So we have a special on, on Sudan tonight. Um, all right, y'all, I think that's about it. I don't see anybody with any other questions that people that seem to be... Um, worth reading i'm not going to put up any slander or personal accusations um um just double checking see i don't see nothing okay all right family i love y'all thank y'all for um um yeah, I don't see anybody. I'm just double checking, make sure I'm not because people be mad sometimes when I miss their questions, and I, I'm not trying to. Sometimes I just don't see them. All right, family, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. See y'all later. Uh, but we'll stay on top of the Sean King question. I'm curious to know: Would, would y'all want me to have a conversation with my brother, your brother, our brother? Would y'all would y'all like that? Would y'all like uh, to to see a Sean King um, conversation where he can talk about his faith, where he can talk about why he made the choices he made, where he can answer these questions? Because I think that it's not unreasonable to say, look, Sean, people got questions. Sean, you got a history. Sean, there's some harm here. Sean, there's some hurt here. How do you explain this? He may say, I don't have to explain my faith choice. I don't think he'd be wrong for that. Or he may say, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to create peace with some folk, to explain my position to some folk, to maybe make some dawa, right? To pull people in, to draw people in, to call people to the faith. Um, that could be the answer. Just saying, it's up to y'all. We'll find out. BBI says, no, I, I prefer DJ Khaled. I hear you on that. To me, if anybody got some explaining to do right now is DJ Khaled, who, uh, 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 D.L. Hughley called him DJ Callus, because uh, of how callous he's been to his own uh, people. Um, I, again, I'm not. It ain't for me to tell Palestinians how to how to deal with their own Palestinian people. But I will tell you, Khaled would be suspect. He'd be looking real funny under the light. Anyway, y'all, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all later. Peace.